the call to order the regular governing board meeting of the Jefferson Elementary School District, June 12th, 2013 at 716. And can we have members present? Hans Hansen. Rebecca Douglas. Marie Brizuela. Here. Joseph Otaidi. Here. Shaquille Ali. Here. And I will ask Mr. Vidalis to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a request for a motion to table item one four to a future meeting. Who was that request from? That was uh, from you, right? That's for me, sir. Yes. All right. Uh, and the second question. You want to do this? Yeah. Full session. Oh, I'll make a, you want me to make a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion that we um, remove item under general functions, item 1-4, appointment of members to the Measure 1 Citizens Oversight Committee, and also to um, take remove item under closed session, item 2, the superintendent's contract. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Approve the agenda as submitted, uh, or as amended, as excuse amended, me. Yes. As amended. Well, I just did that. Yeah. What well, a, why, why am I listening to you? Is no. it, so we don't have to do it again? No, no. Oh. I'm trying to move this along. Public hearing on the five-year deferred maintenance plan. This is an opportunity for the um, public to comment on the five-year de deferred maintenance plan. Each year we bring it to you with some minor changes and this year we're doing it again as routine. Should we, um, Mr. President, do you have any speaker cards for this item? I don't think so. Should we give some background on what the public comment would be for today? Um, or it's uh, it's it's public comments on the uh, five-year deferred maintenance plan, and if there's members of the public that have submitted a speaker card, we would hear them at this point. Otherwise, the hearing is closed. All right, hearing is closed. And now we have public hearing on the plan for Tier 3 State Categorical Program Flexibility Transfer for fiscal year 2013 to 2014. Um, again, this is an opportunity for the public to comment on the um, use of Tier 3 categorical programs in the year 13-14, um, though it is likely that it will not even um, come to be. But um, if the public would like to comment, they may. All right, hearing is closed. Do we have any comments from any administrator? I would just like to say that I attended all three of the middle school graduations, and they were very nice events. And I'd like to um, congratulate everybody and wish them the best in their high school years and college years. Um, I'll pass. All right. I'll pass. Comments from any board members? Ms. Weller? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say I also attended the three graduations and I'm very proud of all of our students and uh, how many of them have done so well and wish those graduates lots of success and happiness in high school, whichever school they choose to go to. And what else did we have? Anything else? Uh, oh, yes, I did attend the uh, TRP policy that they had the dance program. Uh, it was a wonderful program and as everyone remembers, that's the program that won a Kent Award 
this year, and they were just just very talented and delightful. And and two of those students were uh, able; uh, they were invited to come to the PTA. 50th anniversary celebration and performed and the audience really enjoyed their talent and they were proud to be there. So other than that, I think that's it that we did. And, oh, well, that's right, I just said it. We also had the 50th anniversary celebration of PTA, which was very well attended. Um, we had about 130 guests there and um, a lot of good things happened. So I just want to say thank you to everyone throughout the 50 years who have done so much for our schools by participating in the PTA. That included teachers as well as principals and administrators and the parents as a team. Thank you. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity in the room, um, how many people live in Daly City, South City, or within basically five, ten minutes driving? Great. Um, as you know, as was part of the uh, redistricting lawsuit that happened here in San Mateo County, um, what we were able to do for the first time is have district-based elections in which you who live within the area can vote for the supervisor of your choice. In the past, it's been countywide. So for example, someone in South County, people in South County could vote for the people up here, which may not be necessarily your choice for your supervisor. Basically, your voters' rights were being violated um, as per the California Voters' Rights Act of 2001. Um, on June 15th, the reason to get involved is to make sure that those lines are drawn to your benefit, not drawn to your dismay. Um, on June 15th at the Filipino Bayanihan Resource Center, there'll be a workshop by the Asian Law Caucus and the L Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights so that you could um, get a background on why you should fight for these district lines so then they'll be not be drawn to your dismay. Or um, On June 18th will be a public hearing in um, Half Moon Bay. June... <coughs> Just lost it. Monday, June 17th from 6 to 8 at the Filipino Bayanihan Resource Center. They're going to talk about why districting is important, why participating in drawing these district lines is important. On June 18th, on, I'm sorry, on Saturday, June 15th in Half Moon Bay from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Kunha Im Intermediate School Library on 600 Church Street in Half Moon Bay, they'll actually have countywide um, county-based hearings regarding these district lines and take public comment. On Tuesday, June 18th, which is extremely important, I encourage people to participate here in Daly City at the War Memorial Community Center at 6655 Mission Street from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. The, reasons, the reason this is important is because the lines can be drawn not to your benefit. And if that happens, fighting for resources, fighting for see uh, countywide services may not come here why because your vote won't count as much i'll give you a perfect example of actually what shocked me in north county i i believe most of the population is up here however i went down to south county and every in the summer months i think every week there were um there were open air um movies being played supported by the county. And I was wondering, how come there's no daily city <laughs> services like that for our community, even though most of the population is up here? So that's just, just an idea of what comes down there versus what comes up here. So voting for your rights and voting and having public comment on getting countywide resources and things of that sort, that is just the tip of the iceberg. That's one that I remember. However, if you think about potholes, if you think about lights that are out, if you think about basically things of that sort, that could be those resources, your taxpayer dollars, should go back to you. So once again, I encourage everyone to go to those meetings. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Um, schools are out, but the business is still going forward. And that's the end of my uh, comments for tonight. We have four speaker cards for persons wishing to address the board. I'll call Kathy Mackay first.
Do I need to hit that? Oh, okay. Good evening, JESD Board and District Office Administrators. My name is Kathy McKay. I'm a teacher at Daniel Webster and a proud AFT member. I'm here to advocate for a respectable raise for JESD employees, a raise that shows the value my district has for me and for my colleagues, a raise that acknowledges employee dedication and loyalty. But I want you to try and understand where I'm coming from, where we're coming from. I feel very disrespected, underappreciated, undervalued, and unheard when offered a 2% raise. I've been at JESD for 11 years, and I want to share some data with you that might help you understand and feel where I'm coming from. Keep in mind this data is preliminary. I've actually lowballed the figures. I've lowballed my minutes and I've lowballed my weeks. Um, I needed my per diem or hourly rate of pay for my calculations. I conservatively estimated that I volunteer, also known as work for free, 15 minutes before school and 15 minutes during my duty free lunch. This is an extra two and a half hours per week, which I multiplied by 30 weeks. This equals 75 free labor hours per year. I also included 25 hours of classroom setup time before school begins. Total hours of free labor, 100. That's, um, that's not accurate, it's low. This actually made calculations easy, so if my per diem pay was $34 times 100, it was 3400 for that year. And I took into account um, each year was different and that we also had um, step increases. So I added my free labor for 11 years, and that totaled $46,200. The district has not had to pay for this labor. I've not included many minutes of free labor needed to do this job. I've also not included a monetary amount on my family members who've helped me year after year to set up my classroom. I've, I have included furlough days. Um, if one teacher saved the district 46,000, how about 300 teachers? So I multiplied 11 years, which was $46,000, times 300 teachers, and I've estimated collectively that we've saved the district $13,860,000. I gave the bare minimum of 30 minutes per day extra. This is only using two and a half hours of free labor per week in my calculations. Most teachers work many more minutes per day and hours per week. I've not even delved into the demands that are piled upon us year after year and how the cuts to classified student support services and other funding sources have affected daily work conditions. When I say I feel uncared for, disrespected, unheard, invalidated, un unappreciated, now you know why. Donna Hart. Hi, I'm Donna Hart. I wanted to say thank you for letting me address you to the administration and to the board. I'm also here to advocate um, uh, for some pay increases. The 2% raise that was offered I felt was um, insulting. I've just spent almost three days putting my room together. Um, this is what I did today. Count, organize, clean, pack away all. Curriculum, pencils, rulers, EM games, that's for you. Geometry templates, calculators, binder paper, graphing paper, construction paper, copy, printer paper, boxes of tissues, sanitizer, markers, crayons, brushes, universal access materials, and more. Move all furniture and desks to the window side of the classroom. Pile desks too high so they don't take up too much room so the floor can be cleaned one half at a time. Recycle all paper products no longer needed. Sweep up any paper or other items from the floor. Give grade book to the secretary. I don't know why that's here, because my families have my email and can call me if they need to. Clean desk, put, away, put all items into the closet. Securely lock the closet doors, clean off the bulletin boards, create and print report cards complete with individualized, insightful, helpful comments for continued summer learning. Identify and create certificates for students who earned honor roll, citizenship, and attendance awards. Pack up and return all electronic vi visual aids. Return all lunch cards and pouches. Return all library books and bill students for lost books. Double check the fire for fire code compliancy. They're coming soon. Um, fill out student QM records by hand. Update the addresses by hand. Add the ELA cards filled out by hand. Add student photos and writing samples. Check for home language servants survey compliance while I'm doing that. And when I'm doing the, the QMs, make sure that all um, suspension notices have been removed. Refile the QMs. And because I changed grade levels this year, I had to exchange all the curriculum to another room by myself. And the desks and the chairs because I changed primary to upper. So um, oh, don't forget the ma. The third and fourth quarter reports are due. So that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. It's not summer break for me yet. 
Thank you. Giannini. I'm Janet Giannini and I would teach first grade at uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt School and while I'm extremely passionate about the topic of the previous speakers, I have a different one tonight. Uh, last month we heard the Aramark representative who came and talked about food service he mostly talked about lunch and Mrs. Brizuela was justifiably concerned about the sugar in the canned peaches. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk to you about the sugar in the breakfast. We have a poster in our school that says, among many uh, nutrition um, promoting posters, that says um, less sugar, more energy. But uh, my students are headachy, tired, hungry at 10.30 in the morning because nearly every item offered at breakfast is crammed with sugar. Here's a partial list. Frosted flakes, honey nut Cheerios, waffles with syrup, pancakes with syrup, cinnamon rolls, bear grams, animal crackers, also known as cookies, chocolate filled bre chocolate breakfast bars, apple cinnamon breakfast bars, fruit flavored yogurt, and chocolate milk. Uh, on the rare occasion, exactly three times in the last four, uh, four weeks of school that something without sugar was offered in the morning. It was a bagel with cream cheese that really has no nutritional value. Um, and so, you know, our students, they need a high protein breakfast that, so that they can think and learn in the morning. What's being offered is nothing more than a disgrace and I'm calling on you to change it. Thank you. Mr. Vidalis, would you take care of this best you can? Yes, I'll investigate it and we'll report to the board. Thank you. Um, I, I, for one, have never given my own children, four of them, any sugar-coated cereal. So I understand <coughs> what you're talking about. Yeah. But thank you for bringing that to us. Melinda <clears throat> Dart. Yes. Good evening. Melinda Dart, AFT 3267. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to us this evening. Um, so I'm sure that most of you have heard that the uh, uh, the budget is um, that the the governor's uh, budget went through with some modifications, <coughs> and it looks like the uh, local control formula funding has passed. And I just wanted to share that um, the news that I'm getting is that the base rate is $537 higher per student uh, than the May revise. So I was really happy to hear about that. Um, I think that we all uh, have felt for a long time that uh, students who are EL learners and students who are free and reduced lunch need more funding and I'm glad that that uh, shift is happening. And I do realize that it does not make up for uh, completely for years of cuts and that we're still trying to get back to a level of, of 2008. But yet, to me, it looks very hopeful that we have more money coming in per student. And, uh, and I'm happy about that and I have high hopes that with uh, more funding coming in that we'll be able to get somewhere in negotiations. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for your comments and although we're not able to uh, respond, we are sure that our superintendent will be looking into the matters that you brought before us. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Lee, oh, I do have comments. All right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, them up, like real me. quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'd just like to uh, thank and congratulate our staff, our students, and our community for a very successful completion of another school year. Um, things went really well at the end of the school year, and no th and much thanks to um, everyone who got who made sure that happened. Um, we're getting ready to start up the new school year, and as Ms. Dart um, referenced, uh, we're looking forward to receiving the details of the proposed state budget. It has not passed. It has not been voted. In fact, it hasn't even been printed yet. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting a printed version of the compromise to be out in the next 24 hours that we can look at. Um, but as Ms. Dart referenced, you know, um, there seems to be um, lots of promise um, in the news 
tidbits that are coming out that there should be some increased funding and unrestricted ongoing funds um, to take care of um, things that one-time expenditures cannot take care of. So um, we are monitoring the budget situation closely. It does need to be passed statutorily by Saturday. Um, we expect a printed version that could be analyzed sometime tomorrow. All and right. uh, hopefully by the end of the weekend, legislature can vote on it. And then the governor has 10 days or tw two weeks to sign it after that. So um, we'll be keeping you updated as things become more solidified. Would we be getting a copy of that ourselves? The state budget? The, the copy you're going to be getting, yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we can probably, we, I, do, I do not look at the state budget. That's like thousands well, of pages. What's but concerning us? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You will we'll be sending you some reports that, you know, that we get that an, sort of analysis of those, um, of, the, of the budget and what some of the, the big points are. Mm -hmm. We also get um, newsletters and emails from CSBA. Sometimes. And also from yeah. AXA to the um, administrators. Yeah. Some, uh, so many, many of the organizations, they all process and analyze it, and they all pretty much sum up the, yeah. the a pretty yeah. good summary. You I only brought it up if, if you're going to be getting a, getting some of that information, pass it on to us. Because if you're saying that it, he does, he has ten days to sign it and all that, maybe some of us can do some, you know, networking, reminding him to sign it. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I have a motion or I have a request to remove 3-4 from the consent agenda. 3-4? Oh. Which is basically agreement with Lozano Smith for general legal and surplus property legal services for fiscal year 2013-2014. So you're taking the star off only, right? Yes, take okay. the star off. I'd like to just discuss that real quick. Okay. Would you anticipate that to be a five-minute discussion, ten-minute? Um, five. Okay. You want to make the motion? And then I'd like to m motion to approve the consent agenda um, as amended without 3-4. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, did we have a resolution on this? Uh, could we take a... A roll call vote on it? All right. Because yes. we have a resolution here. Resolution. Mm, sorry. Mrs. Brizuela? Aye. Mr. Otidi? Aye. Mr. Ali? Aye. Ex acceptance of donations. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I usually request this, and basically I want to personally thank um, the people who donated to JESD this, during, this, um, during this time. Franklin D. Roosevelt PTA, Save Mart Supermarkets, Wells Fargo Foundation, Wells Fargo Community Support Campaign, and Vikash Kumar. Daily City Gateway Lions Club, thank you very much. Jesse Holland, John and Sally Lakata. Wells Fargo Foundation Educational Matching Gift, and Sal Alababidi, IT Manager at Goodby Silverstein Partners. Thank you very much for your donations to the school district. I think we missed a couple. Was, uh, also, Mercy Lopez yeah. and Eden, or Eden Bonifacio, and Niant Singh and Mikhail Paltau. Hopefully I said their names correctly. Uh, so I move that we approve the donations. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mars. Mm -hmm. yep. Mars results in connection to Common Core standards. Yes, I'd like to invite Ms. Debbie Borda up to share the results of the Mars assessments as well as to talk about um, math common core all right and it's all right to applaud I'm giving you math problems just for reference <laughs> Um, oh, she 
did give us problems. <laughs> 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 oh, I should say. Yes, the rule. Oh, okay. or something. Yes, Sorry. Sorry. I think I have to go to the restaurant. Thanks. I think I have to do one more Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. So good evening, good and evening. Um, thank you for having me here this evening to share with you um, where we are with the Common Core standards, state standards, as well as how our district efforts in using the MARS exams are helping us um, give an idea about where our students are in this type of assessment and where we need to go. Um, and to thank all these teachers in here who administered the MARS exams, and, and a number of them also led our teachers through the scoring sessions. So um, thank you to all of you, as always. Okay. Um, so before I share the MARS data, I would like to give you just a brief background on the Common Core, um, just to remind you of information you probably already have heard. And um, in 2010, the state of California adopted the Common Core standards that were um, originated nationally by the governor's associations and by the state boards of supervisors. And the charge that was given to the authors of the Common Core were to um, design something that was going to make our students college and career ready with 21st century skills. The uh, work that they did was based on research and practice evidence and they wanted to have fewer standards, higher level of rigor, and to have clarity across and coherence across the grade levels and within grade levels. And so for math, the authors were asked to address these three shifts. One is focus, meaning that um, rather than having tons and tons of standards at every grade level for students to master and for teachers to try to teach, is to do less standards and to go in more depth. And then for coherence is to make connections within the grade levels as well as across grade levels with very deliberate progressions on how mathematical ideas develop. And the third piece is the level of rigor, looking at the, um, the, the amount of thinking that kids need to do as well as who's doing the thinking and the sense making. And, um, and that addresses conceptual understanding, procedural understanding, influence as well, uh, uh, influency as well as application. There are two types of standards in mathematics. One are the standards for mathematical practice. These are the same eight standards that go across all 12 grades. And then there are also the mathematical content standards, which are different at every grade. The mathematical practice standards are processes that we want our students to be proficient in, such as communicating mathematically, constructing a, an argument, making sense of problems, and um, the math content or the verbs of math that we're familiar with, the adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. What's a shift for us in this area is for many years our accountability system and students have been defined by only their mathematical content. There hasn't been an accountability system towards the mathematical practice standards, and that will be a, um, a shift for us to try to um, move towards. So um, <clears throat> the claims that the assessments are being designed around are four for the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortia, which is which we are a part of members of in California. Claim number one is that students to be proficient in mathematics have to have strong um, idea, uh, strong understanding of concepts and procedures. And that's something that we're pretty familiar with. That's where we spend a lot of our time, uh, time now. Um, we try to do the others, but it's really difficult with such an emphasis on claim one in our standards right now, as well as the curriculum. And the other three claims are problem solving, students communicating their reasoning, and modeling mathematics and data analysis. So the assessments that are being designed are to embody these four areas. Currently, our assessment system is 100% based on claim number one for our students to show proficiency. The design right now shows claim number one only to reflect 40% of the student's proficiency level, where claims two, three, and four, which are higher levels of thinking, are going to take about 60%. So that's a big shift in what we're um, being assessed on right now. There's also um, a level of rigor. They're using these depths of knowledge to construct the new assessments. And um, our current assessment 
is in mostly in levels one and two. On an analysis that UCLA research study did recently on the proposed Common Core assessments versus our current common, uh, California STAR exam, 76% um, of the smarter balanced new generation assessments were in levels three and four and 100% of the CST was in levels one and two. So that's a big shift for us to think about as we, as we move forward. Can I stop you for a second? Please. So thinking about that shift, um, and I think you may have answered this before, um, is there a time limit that's placed on the students as they're taking these assessments? No, all right, that's good. <laughs> No. There will be other constraints well, I mean, <laughs> that we're going to have to address. They have but, to leave at a certain point. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But good question. All Thank right. you. So um, one of the structures we have in place in our, um, in our district, and we have for 14 years, have been the MARS exams. And um, it's been hard to utilize them to their potential and their value because we've had conflict with having to focus so much on a different type of assessment. Sure. So um, what's really amazing now is that we still have, that we have all these resources because these are the exams that are being used as the models to design the Common Core assessments. 